Hello guys, this is Ali Solanki and today we'll be talking about how to start your freelancing journey in Web3. Now we'll be talking about each and everything. We'll be talking about how to build a personal brand, how to bring in clients, how to pitch them, how to do every single thing. I'll be sharing all my experiences throughout these years and yeah, let's get started with the video. So first of all, why should you even listen to me? To give you a small background, I started off as a mobile app developer. Now, I was developing mobile apps just for fun and then I started to do freelancing in that. I developed a bunch of applications for some clients. Then I shifted over to developing web applications because that was on the rise. And then later I started to do freelancing in the Web3 space. Apart from that, I also run an agency called as Watermelon Gang and right now we are handling some of the biggest brands in the Web3 spaces, social media pages. So we handle their Instagram, YouTube and all of those things. Now, I want you guys to have a step-by-step -step roadmap of all the things that you can do in order to start your freelancing journey, maybe even scale it up to becoming an agency in itself. So let's talk about the step-by-step -step roadmap. The first thing that has helped me a lot, and I cannot deny this, is the YouTube channel that you're watching this video on. Because of this YouTube channel, I got so many clients on board. I documented my entire journey. My GitHub started to skyrocket because of the channel. I used to help a lot of developers and due to that, even the repositories that I made on GitHub started to blow up. There were over 200, 250 folks on my repository. So that was a huge win for me and that all happened because of this YouTube channel and that's it. So am I saying that you need to have your own YouTube channel in order to do all of these things? Not really. But what I am saying is build your own personal brand. Start documenting whatever you do. Now, how do you document it? There are four ways with it and each level will raise the level of trust that your audience has with you. The level of community that you build will increase with each of these levels. The first level is text-based content. Now, text-based content basically means writing your own blogs or maybe even being active on Twitter, writing tweets or being active on LinkedIn or other platforms as well. All of these platforms will help you build an audience. You can document your entire journey. You can tell them that, okay, today I am building this particular application. Today I am learning from this particular video. You can even share that you watched this video today and what all you learned and write down all the pointers, share it on LinkedIn, tag me. I'll share it with my community as well. Share it on Twitter, tag me over there as well. So that is how you can grow your own community. But text-based audience only see your text. They do not hear you, they cannot see you. And that's why it will not form a lot of connection with your audience. It won't form that level of trust with your audience. So then we come over to the second level, which is audio. Now, once you've started to build an audience with the text-based content, next up, you can start with audio. Now, audio basically means if say for example you are active on twitter spaces so you can talk to the community the second thing that you can do is start your own podcast which is quite easy you have to have a mic and then just start your podcast and invite guests over maybe even do a solo podcast if you want and just start talking about whatever you're doing in your day-to-day -day life whatever you're building whatever you're learning and share it with the community so this was the second level of building your personal brand the third level is video. Now, when it comes to video, the level of trust with the audiences increases exponentially. Now, you can not only see me, but also hear me out at the same time. You can listen to my views, you can see my body language, you can see the expressions I make with each of my senses and that eases the level of trust with the audience as well. But of course, if you're not comfortable in front of the camera, you can start off with the other two levels and then maybe slowly shift towards making videos as well. The fourth level of building your personal brand and this is one of the most important ones and something that I discovered recently was going to meetups and actually meeting people in person. So there are a lot of these Web3 meetups that are happening around my city and even in Bangalore, Delhi and all of these places. The recent ones being the Solana Hacker House that happened in Delhi. So I keep visiting all of these events and that's how I get to meet the audiences that actually follow me. I know that almost all the audiences that watch my videos are interested in the Web3 domain. 
and the best place to find them would be at a web3 meetup so we talked about how to build your personal brand and if you build your personal brand clients will come in rather than you approaching the clients clients will dm you they will message you they will mail you closing clients with that process is quite easy is 10 times easy if i were to say to be honest if you reach out to clients if you write cold emails you might be writing cold emails to hundreds of clients and maybe 5 or 10 of them might be converting but over here if one client approaches you they are most definitely going to convert if you just talk to them okay so we talked about how to bring in clients but what are the services that you can provide now of course in the freelancing world you can do all sorts of things and you can provide them services with community management you can do development social media management and all of these other things but over here what i'll be focusing on would be marketing and development that's it so let's talk about marketing at first if you want to give marketing services to clients you first need to learn it by yourself the best way to learn it is building your own personal brand building your own page maybe twitter page maybe a discord community maybe going on reddit and being active over there i've seen many people wanting ten services so being active on linkedin there is no better way i wouldn't recommend you any kind of courses or there's this video that you can watch that will teach you everything about social media i wouldn't recommend that rather build your own social media page and learn from there apart from that if you even go to these meetups which are these web3 meetups or other meetups in your domain then you would find clients over there as well the second step which i'm assuming you're waiting for is how to make money from that so you found out clients right the clients have come up from your social media pages from your personal brand after this you pitch your services to them and while pitching make sure you are documenting every single thing the major mistake that i used to do was when i used to pitch about say social media management i would just write say youtube management and this is the cost that's it i wouldn't give them a proper breakdown i wouldn't tell them okay these are the kpis or key performance metrics that we'll be tracking and all of these other things that need to be there on a pitch when you talk to your first client you would understand every single thing you would understand what do they want the first text of okay i want to collaborate with you i want to handle say your social media page gets what type of replies do they reply with what are your costs what is your brochure send me your website what are the services that you provide so in your pitch include all of these things make a list of whatever the client asks for and make sure in the next pitch you send out all of these things in the first go itself that will just a trick that you can use in order to get more conversions and rather than having to send endless emails of just this is my budget and this is the negotiated budget after that th- these are the things that we'll be doing these are the things that are required from us all of these things can be cut short to just one or two emails and that's it now once you get in say 3 to 4 clients that is when you need to start forming a team now of course if you're doing social media management or if you're doing marketing related services like digital marketing or something like that you might be doing it by yourself at one point or the other you would have to grow a team wherein you would have to get in graphic designers some digital marketing experts someone to manage it all and there are a bunch of different things that you would need people for How do you find this team? To be honest, you can find this via your own personal network. If you are already listening to my advices which is of building a personal brand and if you just post say for example I wanted to hire a video editor. I just made a video, told them okay I'm hiring for a video editor. Many comments started pouring in. People started mailing me on my email address and I got a list of all the video editors that I can hire and I selected few of them. Of course you can do this or you can ask your friends they can give you referrals and that's how you can build a strong team okay so the marketing part has been covered we've talked about how to find clients how to pitch to them and how to you know build a team as well now let's jump over to the development side so if you've not watched my blockchain developer roadmap please do watch it i think i've made two videos one video is on the exact roadmap and all the things that you need to learn it contains all the facts 
and the second video is about my experiences throughout learning blockchain development field and becoming a blockchain developer but just to give you a brief idea to develop your own decentralized app you need three things one is the front end so front end can be made by react js the back end the back end can be made by node js or something else Apart from that, you would also have to use, say, Truffle Suit and the other tools that are there just for the backend. Of course, this would also include all of your smart contracts and you would have to do testing on them. So you can use Ganache for that, maybe even have to use EOJS or other packages in order to manage that. Now, apart from that, you would have to learn how to bridge the gap between both of these things. So for that, you would have to learn, say, different packages and different things that are available in order to connect the front end and the back end. But I'm not here to talk about the technical details because I have covered them in my previous videos. So go watch them out. The first thing obviously would be to build your own personal brand. Document all of these things. If you've built your projects, if you were learning about say a hello world smart contract, then just post about all of the journeys that all of the resources that you used and the final product should be there on your GitHub repository and shown to the world that, okay, this is something that I've made, right? For developers, GitHub profiles are basically like your resumes. So if you've contributed to open source projects, if you've built certain platforms or repositories which are used by hundreds of people, then that would mean that your profile holds value. This is how you will find clients in the development space as well. Now, of course, in the development space, building your personal brand also would include building your GitHub profile. So make sure after this video itself, you learn about Git and GitHub if you don't know it already and start making new repositories, start developing projects and deploying it over. Okay, so we've talked about how to show your authenticity and how to show off your projects to all the clients that might come in. The second thing that I want to talk about is how to make money off of it. Of course, if you are finding clients in the Web3 space, they would generally pay you through crypto. And, uh, and if you're getting paid in crypto, then you would have to learn about the taxes along with it. So you can check out my video on taxes as well, which I've talked about in detail. In India, the taxes on crypto assets is around 30%. So you would have to pay like 30% of your crypto earnings to the government. But there are a lot of ways around it. I am not promoting any of it, but you can check my video out in order to understand how other people are doing the same. Another thing that I want to talk about is people often ask me, what is the service that we can provide? Even in the development space, even in the marketing space, what is the service that we can provide? In the marketing space, I've already talked about the services. One is social media management, digital marketing. These are the two of the most important things that you can learn. Apart from that, you can learn about community management and actually handle Discord communities for all of these different projects. So that is what forms the major bulk of marketing. But when it comes to development, it is a whole different ball game, right? There are so many things that you can explore. You can learn about how to develop smart contracts, which is a huge field in itself. You can specialize in creating just cryptocurrencies or crypto tokens. You can specialize in creating NFTs. And there are a bunch of different things apart from that. In order to learn about how to create your own NFT and ERC721 contract, I've made videos on all of these things. You can just watch them and learn about it. After learning, you can provide these services to your clients. Make a small web page or something of that sort and just pitch it to all the clients that you find. Make sure you're listing what is the service that you'd be providing, what is the timeline that would be taken for each of those things that you'd be developing and all sorts of things. I've noticed that in the development space, rather than having just freelance developers or people who can just come and go, they would require developers who are there with their project for a very long time. The knowledge transfer in the Web3 space, it's quite huge. So if I am developing a project for a client, if I just leave that project and if some other freelance developer comes in my place, it would be really difficult for the knowledge transfer in order to send him, okay, these are all the contracts and tell him about all of them. Instead, what clients prefer is to first hire a freelance developer and, and then try to make him full time on the team itself. So if that's something that interests you, you can go ahead and pitch that as well. But that's it for this video. If you like this video, then do press the like button. Tell me in the comment section below that you've watched this video till the end. And also tell me what is the next video you would like to see to get featured on the channel.